Right, signals on straight track, no points involved. I'll use these econ signals that I've had laying about. We'll do a build video on these in the future. But for now, this is just going to be an easy straight track operational one. We'll start off easy. This one's just a red and a green. So out of the bottom of the signal, we'll have the two negative wires. They go to a resistor. I'll let you argue about whether they should go on the pos or negative in the comments. The other two wires are red, which goes to the red bulb, and a green, which goes to the green bulb. I like Econ because they keep it really simple. Now this is my personal preference. Because the wires that go through the signal tube are really thin, I like to add a little piece of wire to them so I can secure the wires in a chocolate block under the baseboard. It just makes life easier when you when you have to replace one or swap a bulb and did you notice i've got a new soldering iron tip i'll try not to burn myself this time so you've just seen i've added a piece of shrink wrap over the soldered joint and then at the other end i've removed the shielding and tinned the end now i'd run out of uh, terminal blocks and the other day i was about to order some online when i was walking around b&q and was surprised to see that they did them. So that was a bonus. Now, because there's three wires that come out of the bottom of the signal, we're gonna just use three of these terminal blocks. This is pretty basic stuff at the moment, but when we get a bit further down the line, I'll do some diagrams, which I'll put on the screen so you can screenshot them and print them off, or if I can remember how to do it, PDF them on the, in the description somewhere. That's it sorted on the workbench. Now in true Blue Peter style, here's one I prepared earlier. To keep this simple for the time being, we'll just run a negative lead from this signal to our power supply. Then we need to put our positive lead to a switch. Now switches come in many different forms. They're either manual, mechanical or electronic. That's my basic electronics self-taught version of how I perceive switches anyway. So on the basic theme, we'll use this switch, which is a single pole changeover switch. Single pole because it's only got one bank of three terminals and changeover because it only has two positions, either up or down or left and right, depending on how you mount it. Quite often when you buy these online, you'll see them listed as SPDT, single pole, double throw, single pole, change over switch, or on to on, if you prefer. Right, back to underneath the board, and we'll attach a negative wire to the signal and run it to our 12 volt DC power supply. Then we'll attach a positive lead from our power supply to the center of our switch and then two other leads one for the red aspect one for the green aspect now just i've used purple and pink for negative and positive 12 volt dc supply and white for signal control wires that's just my color coordination springing into effect as per my basic wiring video. Then we'll attach our white leads to our signal terminal block underneath and we should be good to go. And there we go. Easy, right? Yeah, but what happens if we have more than one signal in a line and we want to use multiple aspects? Well, we'll do that in a minute. Before we do that, let's recap on what we have done. First of all, we started off with our signal, red and green aspect. Then we attached the negative wire, joined them together, run them to the negative on our 12 volt DC supply. And we had our switch, single pole changeover, three terminals. We attached the positive lead from our power supply to the center. And then we took the top terminal to the red and the bottom terminal to the green. It's not the official way you should draw electronics, it's just my simplistic version of how I perceive them to be and how I understand it. And in my view, 
the top terminal is the normal position the middle terminal is the input position and the bottom terminal is the switched position. Let's put some more signals on the board and see if we can do multi-aspect signalling. Now I'm aware that there are some signal control units, electronic gizmo devices that are available in some of the model railway press, which I noticed in a magazine I was reading the other day. I'm sure that there is a market for that sort of thing and I'm sure they are good at what they do. The way I do it seems to me to be a much simpler, easier way to do it and probably cheaper. Our single pole switch, the one seen here, will, was only for demonstration purposes. So we'll unsolder the wires and we'll pick up our double pole switch, which is what we're going to use to, use, uh, to operate a three aspect signal. Now double pole means that it's got two sets of three connections, the same applying. So the, the center one will be the feed. The outside two are our output terminals and we'll see what happens to those in a second. These are also available on that well-known auction site and they're listed as DP, DT, double pole, double throw. In a vain attempt to stay tidy in my messy world, I uh, made a rudimentary basic control panel, which will we'll attach our switches to that. Then we'll attach our positive lead to the center of one side. And because we've got four signals on our little test track and four switches, we'll do the same for each of the others. So that's just as attach a positive lead to one side of each of the switches. Then to the top terminal on the side that we've attached our pos lead to, we'll attach our wire and then run that to the red aspect of the signal that we're controlling from this switch. Now here's where it can all go wrong if you're not paying attention. Right, so our bottom terminal, we'll now solder our wire onto the bottom and we'll affix it to the center of the next switch opposite our power in supply. My soldered wires look appalling in this video, close up. Might have to do something about that in a future episode. And I had a brainwave to number the signals as well and the switches so it's easier to follow. So we've soldered our wire, our switch lead from the bottom of number one signal to the middle of number two. So where we've just soldered that lead to, we're now going to solder two more leads and run them to the green, uh, to the yellow on the top and the green on the bottom to signal number one. Uh, we'll run those wires to the associated terminal underneath our signal and then it should be, hey presto, it works. Then it's okay if you've got more than two signals, it's a case of rinse and repeat until you get to the end. I haven't touched on diverging routes or junction signals in this episode. That will be in a future episode. Right, let's get the rest of this wiring sorted out. Stop it. Not in this one. I've tried to keep this one neat and tidy. Tried. Anyway. Let's switch the power on and see what happens. That's pretty darn good. Even if I do say so myself. It would be better if my camera could distinguish between yellow, green and red. But, you know, you get the idea. Yeah, pleased with that. Even if it is a test bed mock-up demonstration panel board. Just to recap again, we started off with our three aspect signalling. We joined all the common wires together on the negative side and run a lead to our 12 volt DC supply. We then got our double pole, double throw, DP, DT switches, attached them to our makeshift control panel and then to one side applied power from our DC supply unit. Where we applied our power we then go to the top terminal or the normal terminal 
and then run a wire to our red aspect. We then take the switch wire or the bottom wire and put it to the next signal's centre terminal. From where we've just attached that wire, we then take the normal position and put it to uh, run a wire to the yellow and then the switch position will run a wire to our green aspect. Then it's just a case of repeating the process until you've wired up all your signals, trying not to create spaghetti while you're doing it. Now that you've got the basics, next time we'll look at junctions and how to wire up root indicators. In the meantime, thanks for watching. See you next time.